Yo, let's go on today's video. I got the how to make a basic combat blocking system. So you guys know when you're playing battleground game or any type of combat game, you guys know how you're able to obviously punch people, but then you're also able to, you know, usually hold F to block attacks and stuff, or at least just basic M1s. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So we're basically gonna set up a we're gonna set up a basic M1 system and then we're going to set up uh, a blocking system so you're not able to hit people while they're blocking. And so I've already done this with sword combat, so now we're trying to do this with like actual fist and stuff. So let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Oh, by the way, thank you guys for 11,000 subscribers because I'm literally like four away so i'm just gonna thank y'all ahead of time thank you so much and let's go ahead and get straight into the video okay so first things first is go ahead and create a remote event so head on over to replicated storage click the plus icon you're going to click remote event rename that remote event to combat event then you're going to go ahead and open up stutter player insert a local script into stutter player scripts so local script rename the script to combat script in parentheses put local you're going to delete print hello world we're going to create two variables first let's get a let's create a variable for the user input service so we're going to say local uis is equal to game get service user input service then let's create a variable for the combat remote event so we're going to say combat event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child combat event then we're going to create the two functions first the input uh the input began function so UIS that input begin connect function in parentheses you're going to put input comma processed into you're then going to say if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and not process which pretty much means the player is not typing a chat into you're then going to say if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot f this is where you would put your blocking key by most games usually f but you guys can put whatever you want so f enter so whenever you press F, we're going to fire the mode event. So combat event, fire server, in quotation marks, the name of the event will be block. And then we're going to send over the block type. So start. So since you're pressing F, that means you want to start blocking, right? And then when you let go of F, it's going to be, uh, you want to stop blocking. So then you're going to go up to the end and type else if, then you're going to say input dot key, or dot, dot key code. Input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type that mouse button one and not process this is for the m1s so enter and we're going to set up a basic m1 system just simply so that we can use for testing it like it, it doesn't even have sound effects so i'm going to say combat event fire server in quotation marks you're going to say m1 and then we're going to set up the second function you're going to um, do i want to no i don't think copy and pasting is mm, no we can save some time okay so copy and paste the first function we just did control c Control V, you obviously just want to delete the else if part down here, the M1 portion, and then all you're going to do is change input began to input ended, and then you're just going to change start to end, and then boom, just like that, we are done with the local script. Let's move to the service script, so enter a service script into the service script service, so then you're going to rename the script to combat script, in parentheses put server right so then we have our three animations you guys cannot use my animation ids you guys have to get your own you can get animations from the toolbox just type combat animation or blocking animations and stuff i just took these from the battleground series and use them so we're going to create one variable which is just the combat event so local combat event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child combat event right and then i'm going to create a function for when the players join the game i'm going to create their hitbox as well as we need to create a combat status system that's how games know um what you're doing like if you're blocking if you're using an attack if you're able to get interrupted or if you're just standing there not doing anything so we're going to say game that plays if you want to get a like a better explanation of how a combat status system uh status system works go watch the full video on that Game that players that player added connect function in parentheses put PL or register for the player into you're then going to say player dot character added connect function in parentheses put character enter you're then going to create the combat status which is a string value so you're going to say local combat status is equal to instance that new in parentheses of oh, my bad in parentheses you're going to put string value I'm a parent this to the character because we want this to reset every time they die so we're going to say combat status that name is equal to combat status and then you're going to say combat oh sorry combat status that value by default is equal to nothing and then you're going to create a variable for the attack number so the attack number is just for the m1 so we just know one two one two one two now usually it's one two three but i just do one, just do two so you can copy and paste select it control c control v then I'm going to rename this to attack number. 
Now this is obviously a number value. So control C, control V, control V, control V, and then set the default value to one, because we're gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two. And then now let's create the hitbox. So I'm gonna say local hitbox is equal to instance that new invitation marks part, comma parenthesis to the humanoid root part, so character humanoid root part, right? And then I'm gonna set the properties of the hitbox. So hitbox that name is equal to hitbox, hitbox dot anchored is equal to false, hitbox dot massless is equal to true. Hitbox that can collide is equal to false. Hitbox that transparency should be equal to one unless you're testing C to make sure the hitbox is in the right uh, position or place, whatever. Then hitbox that size is equal to vector three dot new five comma six comma uh, two point five, right? And then uh, for the last property, we're gonna say or second to last hitbox dot color is equal to color three dot new one comma zero comma zero. This is for testing. And then lastly, you're just gonna set the C frame. So hitbox pivot two. Then you're gonna say character dot humanoid root part dot C frame. And then you're just gonna create the weld constraint so you can weld it to the player's character. So you're gonna say local. Oh sorry, local weld constraint is equal to instance that new wells constraint parent this to the hitbox wells constraint that part you're gonna say part zero don't want to do part zero for, yeah oh yeah do part zero so part zero is equal to hitbox then wells constraint that part one is equal to character that humanoid root part and then just like that we're done with the first function now we can do the on server event function so we're gonna skip a line. We're gonna say combat event on server event connect function in parentheses put PLR register for the player comma event types with the name of the event and then comma arg one short for argument number one. So enter. You're then gonna create a variable for the player's character. So local character is equal to player dot character. Then let's set up an if statement. So you're gonna say if event type is equal to quotation marks block enter then you're going to create a variable for the block type so whether it's start or end you're going to say local block type is equal to r1 right then you're going to create a variable for the at which is short for the animation track so local at and then you're not going to assign it a value as of yet you're going to uh, do the next step you're going to uh, take is based on whatever the player's combat status is so you're going to say or the block type sorry so if block type is equal to quotation marks start that means you know you want to start so you're going to set the value accordingly we're going to say character uh, combat status that value is equal to quotation marks block right then i'm going to set the value of the animation track so at is equal to character dot humanoid dot animator load animation parentheses and then you're gonna say script dot block animation you're gonna get your animation and then of course I'm gonna play and then obviously it should be like an idle animation and then you're gonna set up the function here's how you're gonna know um here's how you're gonna set you're gonna disable the block animation when they uh let go of F. So you're gonna say character dot combat status dot changed connect function close parentheses enter right so let me just double check if i'm good so what you're going to do here is you're just simply going to you really copy and paste this control c control v and then you're just going to make it empty so nothing so pretty much once it changes it's going to just set it back to default and stuff right so pretty much the way this works is whenever it changes and if it changes what that means is the person um what that means is that the oh sorry, sorry, sorry I actually did this wrong I actually did this wrong sorry not that I was actually thinking to myself oh, I'm sorry guys it's like two in the morning but anyway I was thinking to myself I'm like what all right we're just gonna stop the animation track we're just gonna stop the animation track that's actually what we do in the next thing that's what we do in the next thing so pretty much when it changes that means the status change whether it be the person is not doing anything just stopped the blocking or they're attacking they no longer need that animation to play anymore that's why we're gonna stop it when it changes so now we're gonna throw the else if and now we're gonna use the part we just typed so else if block type is equal to quotation marks end right enter and then you're just and then you're gonna go here control c control v and then now you're gonna set it to nothing because we already stopped the animation here we stopped the animation from playing here right and then i'm going to throw an else if here for the event type so go after that enter else if event type is equal to quotation marks m1 then we're just gonna set up some basic M1s real quick. If you want to watch, if you want to listen to a full explanation, watch any of my M1 videos. This is just simply for the blocking. So that's what I'll mainly be talking about. So we're gonna say in character dot combat status. We gotta make sure the combat status works. 
that system works so comma status dot value is equal to you know no nothing then i'm going to say character dot combat status dot value is equal to attacking then set up the animation track let me go ahead and save save myself some time let's go find at control c and then you're going to type the word local control v then click the space um do that right local at and then i'm going to say at play for this obviously this is the m1 animation so what we're going to say is going to say uh script regular bracket quotation marks m1 because you guys see the naming i have here so m1 i'd recommend you name my animations the same as well then you're gonna go um you're gonna say m1 um and then oh yeah parenthesis then you're gonna say dot dot to string gotta turn into a string so character dot attack number dot value so we know which in m1 animation to play that value then go on the outside you're gonna say dot dot, dot quotation marks and then uh right parenthesis and then just like that, we are done. The animation track is gonna play. Then I'm gonna use an if statement so that we can uh, set, set the attack number to the next value so that um we know that, okay, they went from one to two or two back to one. Or we went from two back to one. So yeah, I'm gonna say if character dot attack number dot value is less than two, enter then gonna say character dot attack number dot value is plus equal one. And then you're gonna say else if, character dot attack number dot value is equal to two enter then you're gonna say character dot attack number that value is equal to one so we're gonna set that back to one then after the if statement you're gonna set up the ray casting so first things first is the start position so local start position is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot hitbox dot position then let's get the direction so local direction is pretty much equal to the same thing sort of character dot humanoid root parts dot hit box dot c frame dot look vector and then lastly the raycast parameter so local raycast params is equal to raycast params dot new close parentheses enter then raycast params filter type is equal to enum dot raycast filter type that exclude then raycast params that filter descendants inst instances is equal to character get descendants right then after that we're going to create the ray so local ray is equal to workspace ray cast so those start position direction and raycast parameters in there then you're going to set up an if statement you're going to say if ray and ray dot instance and ray dot instance dot name is equal to in quotation marks you're going to say Hitbox, and then here is the last portion for the combat status system, so that we um, you know, the combat status is set accordingly. I'm going to say ray dot instance dot parent dot parent so twice, and then we'll say dot combat status that value is equal to nothing, so that we know that they're not blocking. Then you're going to create a variable for the enemy character, so local enemy character is equal to ray. Oh my bad, is equal to ray dot instance. Uh, Instant, wait, yeah, reader instance dot parent dot parent, my bad. Right? And then we're gonna set the enemy character's combat status value as well. So enemy character dot combat status dot value is equal to attacked. We won't have any special uh, effects or anything. You know, combat effects then of course we'll drain their health. So enemy character that humanoid that health is less than equal to whatever damage however much damage you want, so less than equal five. And then after that I'm literally just gonna set it back to normal stuff now normally we'd have like effects and everything that would kind of create its own delay so for this now it's more so like just like half a second before it's set, it sets the enemy character's comment status back to normal but after all that's said and done we're going to wait 0.5 seconds and then copy and paste or paste again control v and then you're going to set the character's comment status back to normal and then boom just like that we're done let's go ahead and test to make sure this works as always if you guys want access to any one of my scripts and models you guys can become either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description highly recommend you guys get one of them and stuff but uh, yeah we're gonna go ahead and test i recommend testing it like this you could create an npc but i feel like that just takes too much time compared to this i just feel like this is a much quicker way in my opinion compared to like creating an npc Cloning over the hitbox, setting the hitbox, creating the combat status and stuff. I feel like this is just way easier. Okay, and great. I am by myself. All right. So sometimes Studio does that for some odd reason. So I'm just going to uh, insert another player and stuff once the other player finally decides to load in.
and stuff okay there we go now we have two players okay so here's what i'm gonna do right so one if i press f you guys see if i just press it obviously it's it's real quick like because i'm you know i'm starting to block and then i'm stopping but if i hold f i am blocking if i go to workspace open up to player one so if i found my combat status you guys will see if i hold f while i'm holding f it, i'm blocking but if i let go i'm back i'm just back regular and then my m1s here are the m1s you guys can see um hmm i can say i did this wrong okay i can already see i can already see i did this wrong okay very interesting i can already see already yeah I don't, yeah, I accidentally set it to that. Anyway, we'll fix that in a second. What I was really wanting to test here to see if blocking works. So here's what I'm gonna do, right? If I were to walk up to the other player, you guys can see I can do damage to him, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch to the other one, this guy, and I'm going to hold F, press escape to open settings so that it's so that the blocking stays. Switch to the other player, then I'm gonna try to attack him. Oh, I forgot my comment status. Okay, let me reset it. So you guys can see, I clearly cannot uh, damage him. So yeah, the blocking system works. The only issue is for some reason, it's, uh, I didn't mean to do that. For some reason, it's setting the um, the regular character's combat status to attack. Attacking. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. This is supposed to be blank. This is supposed to be blank. I guess I didn't delete that part. Yeah, that's supposed to be blank stuff yeah they're like both these supposed to be playing only the enemy characters to be attacked okay there we go so yeah just like that we just fixed it so yeah um hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did definitely leave a like subscribe um if you find any bugs or anything let me know in the comments and i'll probably address it in uh you know future video and stuff thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed and i'll uh, see you guys in the next video